All right, what's going on, guys? I'm sure if you are a gamer of any sort, over the weekend, like me, you've been playing a lot of Dragon's Dogma 2, which seems to be the next big hitter game, an adventure-filled open-world RPG that's been taking the internet over by storm for good and bad reasons. And I'm sure it's no secret if you've been on Twitter at all or reading articles from gaming journalists, there's been a lot of drama going on for multiple reasons, with one side of people vehemently defending this game, others that are trying to tear it down and stop everyone from playing. And the problem here is, both sides of people on this coin are correct in different ways. Now as someone who is not sponsored, I didn't get a review code for the game, and this is my first time experiencing anything of Dragon's Dogma, except for about an hour of the first one. And I know a lot of you guys that follow me are on the fence of whether or not you should get the game, and by hearing all the backlash and arguments online, I want to help clear the air, and help you decide whether or not you should get this game, and figure out exactly why people are so mad at it, and if that's going to affect you. Now this video will be spoiler free, I am using some trailer footage here at the beginning, but everything else is going to just be the starting few areas. But with that being said, let me begin by telling you my initial impressions after about 20 hours with the game. Now right off the bat, the one thing I can say for certain is that I have been addicted for every second I've been playing. I think the one thing that nobody can argue about is that the game is a blast to play. The one thing it does phenomenally is capture that feeling of adventure that RPG players long for. Exploring the wilds along alongside your pawns, makes the world feel lived in, and adds that extra little bit of immersion that creates the sense that you're not just playing a video game, but are actually on that quest to hunt down the dragon that stole your heart. And I've spent the majority of my time just getting lost in the world, finding random side quests to pursue, or hunting for treasure chests in many dungeons. This game is really hitting all the points that I love about RPGs, and as someone who is desperately waiting for Elden Ring DLC, I don't think I could ask for a better game to pass the time. The combat is good, the quests are fun, the world is massive, with secrets in literally every corner, and the build crafting between your player character and your pawns is addicting. This game is really good and will likely be a game of the year contender, so if I have all this praise for the game, then why are people so mad about it? That's because there is an ugly side to the game. First and foremost, we have to talk about performance, because this has been a big debate. Now, I've been playing through the game on Xbox Series X, and have for the most part held a fairly consistent 30 FPS. Now, personally, I think we're way past the point of games being acceptable at 30 FPS. It's 2024, the technology is more than capable of running every game on the market at 60 and higher. And I know it's definitely possible for this game, because there are random points throughout where it'll jump to 60 FPS. If you're wandering through one of the main cities in the game, you'll have consistent fluctuations between single digit frame rates and high 60s. And this does appear to be a problem on every platform, which simply means that the game is not properly optimized, which the majority of players would like to be the case. Now, personally, I'm not a big performance stickler. It doesn't bother me a lot, but it was initially jarring to turn on a next-gen console and have such poor performance. Does that prevent me from enjoying the game? No, not at all. But I can understand how some people would have such a negative reaction when playing a game in 2024 and experiencing this. Now, I do understand that there's a mod on PC that can fix your frame rate. I'm not entirely sure of all the mechanics of it, but there's no reason you should have to download a mod just for the game to have a stable frame rate. Now, that's definitely not a reason I think anybody should skip the game, but it is something that a lot of people were not happy about. Now, combine that with the next point, which turned what could have been a perfect launch into a firestorm. When reviews for Dragon's Dogma 2 went live, the game was receiving overwhelming praise, with 9s and 10s across the board, and perfect scores from nearly every gaming outlet. But this lasted about a day, until the game's launch, when fans began exponentially review bombing it, driving the Steam reviews all the way down to mostly negative, not because of the game itself, but because of the game's microtransactions. People were very quick to discover that there is a laundry list of microtransaction options that the player can purchase, in addition to the $70 price tag of the game, with 21 different in-game items that can be purchased with real money, some even being advertised to make the game easier. So of course when players saw this, their first instinct was to freak out, because the idea is absolutely ridiculous. 21 different microtransaction options in a single player game that already has a $70 price tag. The sound of that is absolutely insane. And to make the situation much worse, when you read the effects of these items, they sound like the 
most basic RPG features that any game would have, such as an item that allows you to fast travel, one that allows you to change your character's appearance, and currency that can be used to summon additional pawns. And you're probably thinking, like everyone else did upon reading this, you're telling me they're selling all these basic and essential features as microtransactions when you already paid full price for the game. And the answer is, well, yes, but there is a catch. The nuance here is that all of these items that are up for sale as microtransactions are incredibly common in the game. You find them very frequently as soon as you begin exploring, and unless you're someone that doesn't want to engage with the world at all, then there's literally no reason to buy them. The fact of the matter is, you will obtain many of these items through natural play, essentially making these purchases entirely useless. You would be hard pressed to find a worse way to spend your money. But the question is, does that make it okay? And there were an equal amount of people on both sides of that, saying that it's not a problem because they're essentially useless, and Capcom has been doing this forever, so who cares, and other people review bombing the game because of it. Now here's where I stand. Personally, I think this practice should be illegal. I don't care how useless the microtransactions are, if you're charging full price for a game, you should never have to pay more money unless you're buying an expansion that adds all gameplay elements. It's predatory, it's anti-consumer, and in nearly any other industry, this kind of pricing would have been regulated a long time ago. And I know people like to sit here and pretend, like even cosmetic microtransactions are harmless, they're not. The reason the majority of games nowadays ship with little to no content is because they know they're going to make their money nickel and diming the players who don't actually want to play the game, but want to show off to their friends or other players online. And I know that's the case, because I get emails from Elden Ring rune selling sites every single day, offering me thousands and thousands of dollars to promote their products. And I'm not even that big of a channel, so if they can afford to pay me that, you know they're making bank. And for the record, I will never advertise them on my channel, so please stop emailing me. But the reason I say that is this. If there is a slippery slope, it will be taken. People are going to buy microtransactions no matter what they are. So what that communicates to investors and shareholders at the top of these companies is that they should be pushing microtransactions more than anything else. So if you care about good games and you don't want to be paying upwards of $200 $300 to get all the content you should have gotten in the first place, then you cannot sit here and say that microtransactions don't matter because you don't have to buy them. Because money talks, and it talks a heck of a lot louder than somebody's post over on Twitter. But that's just my opinion, and of course free games and full game expansions are a completely different story. Now, with all that being said, should you play Dragon's Dogma 2? In my opinion, based on my personal experience, 100% absolutely yes. Despite the performance issues, despite all the drama, the game is amazing, and it's everything you should want out of an open world RPG. You can still experience the game and love it for what it is while protesting the microtransactions by not buying them. If enough people stop buying them, they'll stop making them and putting them in games. And for Dragon's Dogma 2, that's one of the easiest possible protests you could ever do, since there's literally no reason to buy the microtransactions. And it really is a shame, because if they didn't exist, then this game would be receiving overwhelming praise from everyone, which I think it absolutely deserves for what it is. Now, if you're someone that's trying to boycott the game, I hear you, but to miss out on a potential game of the year contender is a bit of a waste in my opinion, since you can still make the same impact and the same message of protest by just not buying the microtransactions. And I do think it's possible to separate the two, as they obviously have have metrics to track that. But those are the reasons people are mad about Dragon's Dogma 2 and whether or not you should still play it. The game's amazing, but all the drama around it is really a shame. With all that being said though, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If you're playing through Dragon's Dogma 2 right now, let me know down in the comments and tell me what you think about the game. Be sure to subscribe if you're new around here. I should have more Dragon's Dogma 2 videos on the way, but with all that, I will catch you in the next one.